May sees the end of the danger of frost in many areas, though do be sure to check when it ends in your area, as for some places it can be as late as the start of June. The passing of the danger of frost is so important as it lets us put in the tender veg such as sweet corn and courgettes, squash, tomatoes, there's so many different types so there's lots of planting to do. There's also the danger of pests around so we need to do something to keep on top of them. It's time now to plant the greenhouse vegetables in their final positions. So we're talking peppers, tomatoes, aubergines, cucumbers. Now, if you've got a greenhouse with a border, what you need to do is just to top it up with some extra compost and then give it a really good soak. The witch gardening trial of feeding tomatoes showed that it's far easier and you get really good results if you add some controlled release fertilizer at planting time. This will then gradually release the fertilizer through the summer and give you really good crops without the hassle of having to liquid feed every time you need to water. If you do want to make sure that your crops are absolutely the best they can be, then we do recommend liquid feeding just at the end of the summer, the start of autumn, when the controlled release starts to run out of oomph. But otherwise, this is the easiest way to keep your tomatoes fed. Now, if you don't have a greenhouse border, what you can do instead is either use a growing bag or even easier still, use a self-watering pot system because then that makes it a little bit easier in terms of watering the plants. Another witch gardening trial showed that the best way to keep tomatoes at peak cropping is to water them at least twice a day. Watering any less than this and you're starting to run into problems with things like the fruit splitting and blossom end rot turning the bottom of the fruits black. Add some controlled release fertiliser to the border and then work it in with a trowel before you plant. Now when you plant the tomato, hold it carefully in your hand, gently squeeze and release the pot. Then what you can do with tomatoes is dig quite a deep hole because tomatoes are really clever and can actually root from the stem as well as the base. And root getting them nice and rooted into the stem as well means that you've got an extra space then and hopefully we'll get up to six trusses before you reach the top of the greenhouse. Now tomatoes need supporting when they're grown as cordons that's growing them on one stem and removing the side shoots as they grow. So what we do is we get a piece of string tie it to a wire above and then we make sure that we bury the bottom of that string you can put it underneath the plant itself and then as the plant grows we just gently wrap it around the string and that will keep it safe. Now we're going to give that plant a really good soak and then we're going to make sure we water it twice a day in the morning and then in the evening and that way we'll get the best possible crops that we can from the plant. Cucumbers can be planted in the same way as tomatoes and it's a good idea to alternate where you plant them in the greenhouse each year if you're doing it in the border so you don't get disease problems in the soil. Opposite to the way that we planted the tomatoes, cucumbers actually like to be planted quite shallowly so that the top of their root ball is protruding from the border or the growing bag. This is because you can get foot rots at the base of the plant if they're planted too deeply in the soil. Climbing and dwarf beans are both tender vegetables, so you need to wait until the danger of frost has passed in your local area. Now in the south, this can be as early as the beginning of May, but in the north, in colder gardens, it can be as late as the beginning of June. So do what's right in your area. When you're ready to plant the climbing beans, make sure you've put up a really sturdy support when which gardening trial different methods of supporting runner beans, we found that an A-frame arrangement of bamboo canes, where the canes are leaned in together with a horizontal support at the top, provided a really sturdy way of growing them and worked the best. Now, when you're growing dwarf beans, plant them in the ground in blocks, and then at the same time, sow some seeds alongside, and then you'll have an extra crop three or four weeks after the main one. Onions, garlic and leeks really don't like the competition they get from weeds, so it's important to keep weeding your crops as you're going along. Now I'd really recommend a small onion hoe because it lets you get in there right amongst the plants without damaging them. Otherwise, the best alternative is a hand fork or trowel just to make sure you can get in there amongst the plants without damaging your crops. These potatoes show the importance of earthing up regularly to make sure all the green tops are covered up as soon as they come from the soil. 
Unfortunately, with these ones, they were left to get the green top above the soil and then we've had a frosty night and you can see there's a bit of blackening there on the leaves. It's not all bad news though, as it hasn't killed the plants and they'll soon recover. So what I need to do is to make sure I'm covering them up with soil to cover them over, protecting those leaves from late frosts and also making sure that the tubers that are developing underneath don't turn green in the light. It'll actually encourage them to produce even more potato tubers for me to harvest later on. Sweet corn is another tender veg that you can plant this month as long as the danger of frost has passed in your area. Now sweet corn is unusual that it doesn't rely on insects to pollinate it, it relies on the wind. So to make sure that it sets really good cobs that are full all the way to the end, you need to make sure that the plants are close enough together that the wind can move the pollen between them and make sure they all get pollinated. The best idea is to plant at least 12 plants in a block of 3 by 4, about 35 centimetres between each plant, and then they'll have just the right amount of space that they'll grow well and also be able to pollinate each other. You can also try growing an extra crop underneath the sweet corn as it grows so tall. We'd recommend something like dwarf beans or even a squash, and then that can be growing at the base of the sweet corn while the sweet corn towers above. If you haven't got a greenhouse, there's no need to worry. You can still grow tomatoes and cucumbers outside. The key thing is to choose the right varieties. Tomatoes in particular have been suffering from a terrible disease called blight, which turns the fruit brown and useless, sort of in the late summer, early autumn is when it tends to hit, and it's just devastating for the plants. Now what you can do is find a resistant variety, such as Mountain Magic or Crimson Crush, and we'd really recommend you use one of those rather than a standard variety. Now in terms of cucumbers, the old outdoor varieties tend to be a bit sort of nasty and bristly, not really very attractive, but in recent years there's been some great developments of small baby sized fruit varieties such as Rocky and Lediva and they do brilliantly outside and produce perfect sized fruit that your kids will love in their lunch boxes. It might seem ridiculously early to be thinking about Christmas dinner, but if you want to eat your own homegrown Brussels sprouts and other brassicas, now's the time to be planting them in the plot. Now the secret with all the brassicas is to plant them really firmly, so that if you were to pull one of the leaves after you planted them, the plant leaf would rip rather than the whole plant coming up out of the ground. Now the best way to keep your plants free of all those pests that seem to just love the brassicas, like the cabbage white butterflies, is to cover the plants with EnviroMesh, making sure it goes right round all the plants so that none of the pests can get in. Later in the year we'll use a wider mesh that will help keep off the pigeons that can absolutely strip the plants in winter just when you were looking forward to eating them yourself. Slugs and snails can be a real problem at this time of year, eating away at the leaves, devastating the plants. They really love the warm, moist conditions under fleece and under fine mesh that we're using to protect from other types of pest, so really keep an eye out for them. Witch Gardening did a trial where we found that the organic slug pellets which contain ferric phosphate seem to do just as good a job as the ones which contain metaldehyde which are much more dangerous to wildlife and even to pets. So we'd always advise that you use those instead. Now for a large area that you know slugs are the problem in, try and use one of the biological controls. These can be applied any time after the soil temperature is consistently above 5 degrees centigrade. You just add them to the watering can and then water them onto the area. You'll need to apply them several times during the season, so it is a bit of an investment of money. And also the other thing to bear in mind is that they won't do anything against the snails. So if snails are a real problem in your area, it's again using the organic pellets and making sure you're looking out for them because snails tend to congregate in areas such as the round raised beds or even in old flower pots that you've left lying around. Quick growing catch crops such as lettuce and beetroot and carrot can be sown throughout the season to give quick crops just where you need them. Now a good place to plant them is amongst the long, slow growing plants such as these Brussels sprouts where they'll quickly develop at the base without affecting the Brussels sprouts and give you more crops in the area. You can either sow them direct, alternatively you can keep sowing maybe six plants at a time in modular trays in the greenhouse as that's a really useful way of always having young plants that can be used to fill any gaps in the plot that appear. 
Once the danger of frost has passed in your area, you can plant out both courgettes and squash. Now, the secret with these, we found, is to try and grow them through a permeable mulch, which is a fabric you can get just from the garden centre or even online. It will help to keep the soil that bit warmer, suppress the weeds and also help to retain a bit of moisture because these are really plants that like it warm and also take a lot of moisture to get them growing really well. When you plant you can cut an X in the black permeable mulch and then peel back the flaps and plant your plant through. Once the plant's in the ground the mulch can then be replaced around it so it's right up to the base of the plant. Broad beans are starting to flower well now and it's not going to be that much longer before we'll be enjoying the first delicious pods of them. Now unfortunately a few pests are after them at this time of year. You can see the damage here that's very characteristic of pea and bean weevil. It takes the little notches out of the side of the leaves like you can see there. Now it might look worrying but actually fortunately this one doesn't really do much harm to your crop so nothing really to worry about there. However, you must keep an eye out for black fly, which will be starting to arrive about now. If you leave these, they'll quickly spread through the whole of the plant and absolutely devastate the crop. The best idea is to, as soon as you see any little colonies starting to appear here in the shoot of the plant, it's just to snap out that shoot tip and throw it away, because you'll be getting rid of the black fly at the same time. Alternatively, you can consider spraying, but if you manage to keep your plants pretty clean, you should get a really good crop. The strawberries have started flowering now and it won't be long before we start to enjoy the first wonderful fruits. Now in preparation for this, we want to keep the plants well watered because they're going to need a lot of water to make nice juicy berries. Try and water at the base of the plants as this will help to avoid getting fungal problems in there. Then with a bit of straw, just pack it in around the plants as this will help to keep the fruit off the ground and to keep it dry, again avoiding fungal problems. Then the last thing to do is just to cover over your plants with a bird proof net and then hopefully all the fruit will be for you and none for the birds. Look on witch.co.uk for lots of other great tips about how to grow your vegetables and our best buy varieties. Now back at the plot, make sure you keep everything watered when we're having a dry spell and also keep hoeing so the weeds don't take over. Then we'll be back next month with lots of tips for your vegetable garden in June.